Good morning. I'm Caroline and this is Vic and we work for Bright. Um, we've been asked to talk you to you today about our experiments in remote working. We'll also be covering how we've applied these to improve our flexible working approach in general and also how this has helped us be more inclusive, keeping it the theme, of course. We don't claim to have the perfect solution, um, but we plan to talk through what we've done and try and put some practical advice in place on how we've made it work for us. And hopefully this will be useful for you as well. So just a bit of <coughs> briefly about who we are. Um, Bright was set up 20 years ago and we've grown to be a team of 40 people. Originally we were a custom web agency, but we now specialize in digital asset management and our core product is Asset Bank. We've now sold it to over 800 clients in a wide variety of sectors worldwide. And we've recently rebranded as well. We were previously known as Bright Interactive, as Sophie mentioned, now Bright. And this is the one of our first outings of our new brand, which is very purple, which I like. <laughs> um, rebranding wasn't just about a pretty logo, though. Um, we also used it to think about how we interact with our clients and our employees as well. And part of our employer branding, as part of that, we asked our employers, employees rather what benefits were important to them, and flexible working initiatives came up time and again. So it's vital to, to our success that we attract talented people who are committed and want to stay with us. And our clients frequently give us feedback that it's our people and the service that they give that makes us stand out from our competitors. And like most companies, we do spend lots of time, money and effort in finding and recruiting the right people and training them up. And there are loads of great companies here amongst us for, in Brighton for people to work to and choose to work for. Our approach to flexible working, I think, has been really key to attracting and keeping some talented people. And we put effort into trying to understand and adapt to those different people's needs. And that way, we don't exclude talented people who for whom coming into the same office day in, day out doesn't work. So in terms of why people stay with us, I think it's a combination of things, but being flexible is one of the most important things. And that's about respecting work-life balance, recognizing that people have got different needs at different phases of their lives as well, and being prepared to adapt our policies and practices to individual requests. And we also strive to see the working relationship as more than just a contract. We're part of someone's life journey, and it's not simply a transactional arrangement. And ultimately, it's about being prepared to do, prepared and open to doing things differently. So coming to the sort of part of what we're talking about, which is about remote working and flexible working, we really started thinking about this strongly. Um, and how it could work for us, where as a result of a request from a team member, Patrick, in 2015. And obviously people have a wide variety of reasons for wanting to work remotely. There could be family reasons, mental health, location, commuting, or just simply wanting a change of scene. Um, and our company already had a history of being comfortable with flexible working, such as people working from home or having varied working hours. But considering Patrick working from Sri Lanka for nine months was a totally different level, it's a bit more of an extreme. Um, so Vic's going to actually talk through with you a little bit more detail about how we approached this interesting challenge for us. Cool, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so my part of this is to introduce you to Patrick. So uh, this lovely chap here is Patrick. Um, now, weirdly, when I started writing this talk, um, after sort of reading all the lovely things, I realised it actually sounds like a eulogy, um, but Patrick <laughs> is still with us, so to be clear, um, not dead. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so to call, um, I suppose, interesting fact, really, to call this guy the godfather of our infrastructure team um, is, is not really a, I suppose, a term I would use lightly. He's been with us for nine years, um, and he's one of the longest serving members of our infrastructure team. Um, I'm pretty sure that if anyone in our company wanted the answer to a question relating to a historical client, um, help with a technical issue, probably some advice about how to achieve the perfect TAM, um, and obviously to keep this topical, what the latest drama in Love Island is. <laughs> Actually, it is true, he's really into Love Island, which I'm quite surprised about. Um, this is the guy to go to. Um, he's incredibly knowledgeable, um, and he's always willing to get involved, and most of all, he's committed to both the team and the company. 
which in all honesty made the decision to positively be supported with his plan to be even, even easier really. So once Patrick had come to us to let us know that he wanted to explore the option of working in Sri Lanka, um, we decided to view it as an experiment. And at Bright we run experiments all the time um, to test out sort of new initiatives and the workplace changes and, and we basically felt this was no different, this request was just an experiment. Um, so we decided to sit down with Patrick and drop a list of principles which would help us give the experiment the best chance of success. Um, so each principle had an, an example of what the employee would need to do and then what Bright would need to do to, sort of, to support it, essentially. So I thought I would uh, run you through these principles to give you some practical tips which you could apply, not just an extreme example of someone working abroad in Sri Lanka, um, but for any employee looking to set up more flexible working arrangement. So um, the first thing would be to have a good and quiet place to work away from family and home distractions. Now, this might seem sort of quite obvious, but if you're at home, recognising that willpower is required for you to actually work, you know, actually get effective work done, essentially, when you've got quite a lot of distractions and maybe kids running around. Um, certainly for Patrick's case, we have decent internet and phone access, but I think that's pretty much a given, really. Um, we needed that to make, well, we needed to make sure he had that so that he could access all of our infrastructure back here in the UK um, and sort of do client calls as well, because he was quite client facing. Um, another one is to be present in your team. Um, so take part in daily and weekly meetings and discussions. And certainly in Patrick's case, was trying to maximise the overlap in the time zone difference between the team in the UK and him, so that you know it felt more connected. Um, both sides, well, must be determined to work together and improve things. So nothing's ever perfect. I think you know we, we thought it'd be great starting out, but we we committed to working together to make sure if things were going wrong, that we made those changes. Um, and we sort of had um, regular retrospectives and feedback sessions to make sure that happened. Again, in Patrick's case, we had to make an allowance for start-up time and address it, to address any infrastructure issues um, and sort of changes in terms of the time abroad. And we also wanted to be realistic about the days and the hours that Patrick was able to work. So this would go for, I suppose, for, for anyone who wanted to do flexible working. Particularly in his case, um, being that he was in Sri Lanka, we didn't want to ruin his holiday. <laughs> Um, he was going there to see a beautiful country, so we wanted to make sure that he had gone there to work for us still, but he hadn't missed um, any, seeing any of that beautiful country. Um, also, with this particular case, we spent a lot of time estimating the cost <coughs> to the employee and the business. Um, because this is quite a big move, we had to consider a few things around um, sort of phone calls, internet access. And with Patrick, we've sort of discussed the idea of maybe contributing to a, a remote office or something like that. We didn't need to do it in the end, but it's a discussion that we had. So, yeah, think about the costs that involved with somebody either working abroad or another flexible working arrangement. And the last one was to think about a worst case scenario um, of it not working before he left. So what if we put all of these things in place and it just didn't, it just didn't pan out? Um, so we suggested, again, positive that we maybe turned it into, into a sabbatical or something like that. Um, so in addition to outlining all the principles, we decided to test out a couple of scenarios ahead of the trip um, for technical infrastructure, VPN access, um, to see how easy it was to connect. And then we installed a webcam, which also became known as PatCam, but I'll get to that <laughs> shortly. So um, as well as establishing some principles, which helped us set the tone and plan for the experiment, um, I wanted just to give you a few takeaways um, which we saw as the overall sort of keys to success, I suppose, and really helped to make this and, and can make other flexible working arrangements work. So the first one would be, make sure you involve the employee in the planning, um, because commitment on both sides is the only way, is it really gonna work? Um, we really heavily involved Patrick in that. Um, it was essential, really, we couldn't have done it without him. Um, have a contingency plan and view it positively. Um, like I say, if, if it wasn't going to work, you know, what, what we can do to sort of make it a success in some way. Um, and finally, having establishing strong communication with the home team. So we spent a lot of time on this, looking at stand-ups, company meetings, um, sort of, uh, messaging tools like Slack, um, and this is where the webcam came in. So, PatCam, TM, um, was one of the things that seemed like a bit of a bizarre idea, but it actually worked really well. Um, so initially, we bought this sort of webcam um, it's like a CCTV camera, really. Um, just to, we thought it'd be a good idea so that he could um, feel a bit more connected to us and see what we were doing. Um, but by the end of the trip, it actually helped us feel much closer to him. 
Um, we put a beautiful picture of him in a gilt frame above it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we watched it swivel around the office um, so he could see what we were doing. And then in the end, we ended up responding to the camera um, and waving at it and other hand gestures um, <laughs> and drawing things and writing messages to him to try and keep that banter flowing um, so that he felt more connected to us. So there were, of course, challenges, um, and it would be massively inauthentic of me not to outline these as well. Um, and some of them are more amusing than others. Um, that's natural snake. Um, so one of the first things was about keeping Patrick engaged and involved with the team. Uh, we worked really hard on this, but there were occasions where we'd be in a meeting room. I mean, he'd be on a laptop, um, and he found it quite challenging to sort of read our expressions um, and feel really connected with part of that meeting. But we did work really hard with it, and we uh, kept moving the, you know, the laptop around, and we made it work. But any key decisions about team, um, team challenges or anything that we were doing, we made sure that he was still involved in any policy changes or anything like that. The second one um, is around the visibility of what Patrick was doing on a daily basis. And funnily enough, this wasn't anything that came from us back in the UK. Um, we trusted Patrick to do his job, um, so it was more of an insecurity on his side. Because he was working in a different time zone, he would often get through a lot of work before we even arrived at the office. Um, and so a lot of the technical work he did need to do as well involved him being quite quiet and going off the grid for a little bit. Um, but he was really concerned that we thought he was off enjoying himself and gallivanting around Sri Lanka and not doing any work. And so it was our job to reassure him um, that we didn't and that we valued the work that he was doing. Um, also, another challenge here was technology and infrastructure, which we expected in a way, to be honest. Um, it did cause us a few problems. There were some power cuts, um, but luckily, Patrick being Patrick, had made a few connections over a few drinks with a local hotel owner and um, had backup generators. Um, and he ended up, uh, whenever there was a power cut, he would hop in a tuk-tuk and do a 20 minute ride over to the hotel and just log on from there. And I think this is where Patrick's commitment to us and um, his role really shone, because when these little glitches happened, it didn't feel like much of a problem. And finally, probably most important, uh, well, from Patrick's perspective, were the snakes in the pool. Um, it took a bit of getting used to, um, and there are also a lot of scorpions as well that seem to have free roaming across his patio. Oh, okay. I'll forgive you this once, <laughs> not again. So, um, <laughs> so we just thought we'd take a second just to reflect on some of the real positives as well from Patrick's experience. It's not all about work. Um, and so his children, who are here, uh, Duke and Oz, um, they got a really different experience. Um, they learned to swim pretty quickly, not in the pool with the snakes. Um, but uh, they went surfing every day. They went to jungle school. I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty cool. Um, and they got to meet lots of uh, other children, make friends with kids from, from a different culture. And also Patrick and his wife got to spend more time with Duke and Oz, um, time they wouldn't have had necessarily here, um, and they had a lot of new adventures. Um, Patrick actually gave us a little soundbite, which he's happy for me to share, um, and he said, the company was really prepared to make this work. Not many companies would embrace it in the same way. It was great that Brighton appreciated me enough to consider it. And um, yeah, we're really grateful that he feels that way, um, and we do really value him. So I think the big question is, so what have we done since then? And I will hand you over to Carol. You have control. I have control. <laughs> <laughs> so since then, uh, since Patrick was in Sri Lanka for nine months, we've applied the same principles and learnings to some other remote and flexible working requests. So for example, we had a technical analyst who went to Canada for three months to explore, explore rather whether he and his wife wanted to emigrate or not and he worked for us out there. Last year, we had a team leader take six months unpaid sabbatical. She went kite surfing around Europe, lucky her. Um, and we ensured that she returned to an equivalent, equivalent level job as well. We currently have a developer who's regularly working remotely in Spain. She's working two week stints at regular points during the year. And this helps her support her family caring for her father who's very ill at the moment. And currently, we're in the process of exploring an option for one of our implementation consultants. He plans to emigrate to Israel, his wife's Israeli, in August. And so we're looking to employ him from there as a consultant in the same role that he's got over here. So we're using all the same principles that we had when we were looking into it for Patrick. So in terms of the positive outcomes for us, well, Patrick's still with us. He's been here for nine years now, and it's four years on from the Sri Lanka trip. We can help our team members from other countries keep in touch with their families abroad. 
and people don't need to leave to make a change or respond to a change in their circumstances. <coughs> and one of the really lovely things is that people really genuinely feel it's an option for them. They can ask and it will be responded to positively. So this has had a knock-on effect in terms of increased commitment and motivation from the rest of the team as well. And uh, our approach um, in balance has, to remote working has really helped us to be more inclusive, to keep people from different countries working for us with changing for family circumstances and personal needs. They can meet what they need for themselves as well as what Bright needs from them. So that is it.